Starting today, Apple is making it easier for you to get your iPhone screen repaired. Hey, I'm Renee Ritchie. Welcome back to Vector. Thanks for watching. Let's get into it. Over the years, iPhone screen repairs have become increasingly complex. Early on, it could be a matter of whether or not the part of the casing that slid off was on the front or the back. But as displays became laminated, as biometric security required securely paired hardware components, as wider gamuts necessitated individual color calibration, as 3D touch meant it had to be calibrated for 3D precisely where you touched, and as more advanced sensors demanded more exacting alignments, a lot more work had to be done to ensure a high quality functional repair. So much so, in fact, Apple had hardware devices installed at all retail locations and certified service centers to do the job better and faster than your average human could until today. Right now, as you're watching this, Apple is in the process of making a change, one as simple and as profound as moving the previous calibration process from hardware to software. In a partner communication I managed to get a glance at, Apple is telling its service providers this. Apple is excited to announce that we have optimized iPhone display calibration to support your work in conducting an in-store display repair. Beginning September 17, 3D touch calibration fixtures will no longer be required to complete display repairs for iPhone 6S and later. We have optimized the calibration process using software. This means we can now calibrate a repaired iPhone by simply connecting the device and running our calibration and diagnostics without the need to run it through a separate fixture. This change will create more flexible workspace in many repair rooms. Most importantly, it will save time for you and our customers. By moving the process from hardware to software, it won't just open up space in existing workshops. The reduced time and expense should hopefully open up the process itself to even more workshops so the certified repairs with certified parts become available to more people in more places. It's part of Apple's ongoing initiative to better protect customers and the environment by making products that don't just work better but last longer. Everything from iOS 12 working on all iPhones going back to the 5S to alchemying up stronger forms of aluminum, steel, and glass to making repairs increasingly easier and more affordable. And because they last longer, you can keep using them. And keeping using them is the best thing for the planet. This move won't satisfy everyone. Right to repair is complicated, often contentious. I'm not talking about the extremes on either side, people who want to get your attention or sell you something by telling you everything should be hermetically sealed or on the opposite end, bloated out twice the size and weight so you can get in there with their expensive Lego. I'm talking about people who simply want to have quality parts available at affordable prices so they can keep their stuff working and keep themselves safe. It's a step, but it's one of many that still needs to come. Earlier this week, Apple also announced a permanent reduction in the cost of iPhone battery replacements. Previously, Apple dropped the price from $79 to $29 for anyone affected by performance throttling on several recent models. That runs out at the end of the year. But from January 1, 2019 and on, the price for out of warranty battery replacements will change again to $49 for older models and $69 for iPhone 10 or later. And that's critical because lithium ion batteries, which can be dramatically flammable, really aren't something anyone should want to screw around with. In the US, Apple is also making Apple Care Plus available on a monthly payment plan in addition to the traditional lump sum upfront. It's great for people who want the protection but can't afford to pay for all of it at the time of purchase. Apple's also expanding Apple Care Plus with optional theft and loss protection. It costs more, but it's better than traditional carrier and insurance plans because if something ever happens, there are no police reports to file or hoops to jump through. Thanks to Find My iPhone, which has to be enabled at the time of purchase, Apple knows your iPhone is gone and that you've removed it from your account and wiped it. That's faster and more convenient than filing reports and waiting for results for everyone. I know not everybody thinks it's worth it, but I get Apple Care Plus for everything. A few years ago, I was at a New Year's Eve party when some fireworks misfired. One of them hit me in the chest, singed my jacket, and then fell onto my iPhone and melted the oleophobic coating, basically turned it into sandpaper. As soon as the Apple store reopened, I took it in. The genius on duty gave me a short lecture about how I had to better take care of my possessions, despite my protests that the iPhone leapt in front of me to heroically save me from explosive injury, and then promptly captured it for the engineers back in Cupertino, whom 
I'm guessing, had never previously included that particular test in their suite. An iCloud login and half an hour later, and I left the store with a brand new version of what was essentially an identical copy of my phone with all of my stuff on it, ready and able for me to get on with my life. Not everyone has the same level of experience I did, and not every time. As Apple scales, it's gonna be an ongoing challenge to scale quality and speed and capacity of service as well. But I think steps like moving screen calibration from big, expensive hardware to more widely accessible software is inarguably part of the solution. So is dropping the cost of repairs, seeing to the rapid availability of parts, and expanding protection to new areas where existing services can provide additional support and convenience. If you're curious, like I am, about how Apple can replace hardware calibration with software, how things like algorithms and neural networks and machine learning work, if just hearing those terms sounds daunting, then Brilliant is a great place to start. They have a bunch of online courses that can teach you the fundamental logic and science behind these technologies if you're new or just interested in the field. Each course is interactive and breaks up complicated concepts into bite-sized chunks to make sure you actually absorb the information, which is something I can't say about any university lecture I was ever in. You can get started easily right now, today. Just check out brilliant.org slash vector. Thanks, Brilliant. Okay, so yeah, I can already feel some of you getting ready to rage into the comments about how this sounds just like an ad for AppleCare or whatever, but it's not. It's my considered opinion that most clumsy people like me will benefit from AppleCare in the long run, even if it'll make the lines slightly longer for me personally right now. But I think everyone will benefit from better and more accessible repairs in and out of warranty, both for our personal devices and for our shared environment. Now, let me know what you think. Have you had to get your iPhone screen repaired or battery replaced? Have you done iPhone screen repairs or battery replacements yourself? What have been your pain points? Does this start to address them? What else do you want to see Apple do? Hit subscribe, hit like if you do, not like if you don't, but let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. Who remembers Liam? Well, meet his sister, Daisy, who can disassemble nine different models of iPhone. Using Daisy, we can reuse those recycled materials in future products. And the more we do this, the less we'll have to mine from the earth.